Hi, Karen from Crafty Karen Designs here. Today um, I've got a, a pretty little box for you. Um, this is the first one that I made. This was the prototype, if you like. Um, it's not my original idea. Um, I saw this on an American Demos website. Um, I think she's called Paper Pixie. I think it's Julie, Julie DiMaggio. Um, very talented lady. Makes very clever boxes. Um, but this is really quite simple to make. So this is the prototype that I did. And then I made another one. Um, this is um, this is a special one. Um, using a, a retired stamp set. My granddaughter is in hospital at the moment. So I've made this as a little treat for her. Um, and it's just got a couple of bags of um, little sweeties inside. But I just thought it might cheer her up. The one I'm going to make today with you is um, a Christmassy one. So let's get started and I'll show you how to do it. So first of all, you need a piece of cardstock which measures nine and three eighths by six and three quarters. And then you need six pieces of foil. Um, for the mats, which measure one and three eighths by two and five eighths, and then I'm going to use the, some of the perfectly plaid, wrapped in plaid, sorry, designer series paper, um, and these pieces are one and a quarter by two and a half, and you need six of those as well. You need some scraps of whisper white, and a scra some uh, a scrap of gold foil as well. You need a corner rounder. Um, to do the top of the um, box and I'm using for this one um, I'm using a retired stamp set sorry um, this one came with the um, with the Christmas with a punch in the Christmas tin in the last autumn winter catalog but I think it's a really cute one this one says to have a holly jolly Christmas and it goes with this punch which unfortunately isn't available now but you could just as easily use um, a square die cut or um, a rectangular shape or a, a little, even a round one. But I just wanted to use this one because I really like this one. So I'm sorry it's retired, but hey ho, there's plenty of others that you can choose from. So I'm going to show you how to make it now. So I'll get the scoreboard. And all the um, measurements will be over on my blog at craftycarandesigns.blogspot.com later on today. So on the long side you need to score at one and a half, three, four and a half, six, seven and a half, whoops, and nine and then you need to also add a little tick mark because we're going to score diagonally across the top of these as well so your tick marks need to go on the long side at three quarters two and a quarter three and three quarters five and a quarter, six and three quarters, and eight and a quarter. There we go, and then turn it 90 degrees clockwise and score at two and five eighths, and five and three eighths. And that's it with the scoreboard. So now, I hope you can see, you've got little tick marks which are halfway between the score lines on each of these columns, if you like. So we need to score now diagonally across these columns. So get your ruler. And from the corner to the tick mark. On each one of these. It's a bit hard to see on this colour. 
I should fold these like just give these lines, these score lines, a quick fold so you can see them better. We'll burnish them properly in a minute. There we go. It'll be easier to see now. So again, from the intersection of these two score lines up to the tick mark you put on the top, all the way along. and burnish these scroll lines properly because as it's a hexagonal box you need a um, crisp fold Now you need to cut up. I'll just switch it around that way. So you've got a um, small skinny rectangle, a long one, and then a long one at the bottom. So the long one you need to sorry, flip it around that way. That's the easiest way. You need to cut up there and remove that one like that. Don't bother doing anything with that one yet and then now you want to cut up each of these score lines because these are going to be flaps underneath the box there you go so you've got all your flaps corner around the tops first. So each of these corners needs to be rounded. So you just need to work your way along, fold it and push it in. It will go right the way across. whether I said but this is shaded spruce this card stock and we'll push that one in as well there we go so now you've got a shaped top and on these diagonal score lines if you just give them a little press this will then help when you come to fold the box together but we'll decorate it first. So all you're doing is pushing down on those score lines. Okay. Now we'll get some wet glue. And put all these panels on. So we'll move that over there for a minute. And we'll all these on the gold panels first. This wrapped in plaid suite is absolutely gorgeous. Really, really pretty, lovely and Christmassy. So just place those patterned one in the centre of the gold foil one, leaving a border all the way around. So it's as even as you can possibly make it. These make great table favours for um, Christmas Day or little um, stocking filler gifts or I'm going to make some for my craft fairs. Um, I think I might fill them with um, some Christmassy chocolates. They always go down well. Now 
And it's quite a quick and easy project to do this. It doesn't take very long at all. It looks far more complicated than it is. When I first saw it, I thought, oh God, that'll take ages to do and it'll be really hard. But I was pleasantly surprised because it's not. It's really quite simple. So I hope you give it a try. And I'd love to see some pictures of the ones that you make. Try to not get any glue on the foil. Last one. Right, now we'll stick those on here. So just stick them on the panel as centrally as you can. There should be a little border all the way around. And obviously if you've got um, a directional pattern on your paper, make sure your patterns all go in the, right, the same way. Sorry if I've gone quiet, I'm concentrating, I'm trying to get these in the middle. And the pattern on the, these three is slightly different, I think, so I've not followed my own rule there, but never mind sure we've been tart and nobody will really notice. Don't know how I've done that. There we go, last one. There. Now we need to put some glue on this tab end. You can use red um, tearing tape or red line tape if you want but I prefer wet glue. Just fold that down, join the two together with a bit of a rub. There we go. Now find the back Fold these down. So where's the back one? That's the back one, that's the tab that I've just done. So keep that one towards you. And that one will be the last one. These two will be the last two that you fold in. So you need to fold that one over. Just hold it steady. Put some glue on that one. And then fold the opposite one across and line it up like that. And then a little bit of glue on the middle. And take that one across that way. Put some glue on the whole of that one. Fold that one across. When you've finished, we'll go down from the inside and, and press it down to hold it. So now we'll take the back one forward like that. And then put glue all over this one. And fold that one back that way. Which gives you a really quite neat effect on the bottom. You can um, cut out um, a two inch circle, the circle punch and put it over the top if you want. But I quite like the way it looks. So just put your bone folder inside and press down 
any of those bits. So now all you need to do is to start pushing these pieces together and they'll all go in like that. Don't force it, just press it down gently and it should go. You can flip these bits up a bit like that to make it look a bit more decorative. You see? And then all we've got to do now is decorate it. So we need a scrap of Whisper White and I'm using Shaded Spruce. And as I said, I'm using this little retired um, stamp set, but you can use anything. And mine says, have a holly jolly Christmas. I think it's really sweet, that. So I'll punch that one out. There we go. And I'm going to punch another one out in the gold foil. And then I'm going to just chop that in half. That way. And then put a little bit of glue on the back of here at the top. just add that there so you're just leaving a little bit a little gold border at the top and do it again at the bottom with the other piece like that there we go I think that looks really pretty and put some dimensionals on the back. I'm using up mine, so I'm using the bits from around the edge, and they work just as well. There we go. And I'll pull the backs off. I've got glue on my finger, it's sticky. Come on. Come off. I'm all fingers and thumbs this morning. There we go. So where's the back? I can't tell. Never mind. Oh, there it is. That's the back. So we'll put this one on the opposite side. Right, the front. There we go. I think that was really pretty now. And you can fill it full of um, sweets or chocolates or um, little gifts, a couple of nail varnishes or some bath or a bath bomb or anything like that. Hope you like it. I hope you'll give it a try. Please um, give me a thumbs up if you do like it. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I'd be really grateful if you'd click the subscribe button and press the little bell and you'll be notified each time I upload a new video. And if you go over to my um, blog at craftycarryingdesigns.blogspot.com, all the measurements and the instructions will be over there later on today. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.